Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be a little bit different because it is more of a story time video, I guess, about how I started as a full-time artist and more importantly, how I paid the bills in those early, uh, in those early days. Um, this came as a question from a subscriber of my YouTube channel here. And, uh, so yeah, I've been receiving this question on and off maybe a handful of times over the past few years and thought it was worth bringing up because if you're thinking about making a transition and you are in a completely unrelated field, that can be the scariest thing about becoming a full-time artist is not knowing how you're going to be able to support yourself. So um, grab a cup of coffee or a cup of tea and sit down with me while I share with you this story. So the year was 2012 and um, I was in a completely unrelated field, nothing to do with art whatsoever. I lost my job and I needed major surgery within a three week period of one another. So my life was pretty much turned completely upside down. Um, I was scared half to death. Uh, I knew that my recovery from my surgery was going to be very lengthy. And it, it was. It was about seven months before I started semi-feeling back to normal. And I could not work. Anyway, um, I had made arrangements to take... Uh, a little bit of time off from the job that I had, but it was with the understanding that I would be able to go back to that job after I recovered from my surgery. Um, so that obviously did not happen. Um, and, and it wasn't the fault of my employer. Um, my employer actually passed away. So it was a completely unexpected thing. And then just a couple of weeks after that, I went into surgery and uh, came out and had difficulties with recovery. And it was just a very lengthy recovery process for me. So while I was recovering, there wasn't a whole lot that I could do. Um, I had to really take it easy. And it was my husband who had asked me if I would consider maybe pulling out some of my old art supplies from college and just, you know, going back to it as a hobby. I mean, I studied art in college and I kind of dabbled in it, you know, over the years just to stay connected to it. But, you know, it just never dawned on me that I would do that. It had been a long time since I had picked up my paintbrush, obviously. So, I pulled out all of my art supplies. I was getting a little bit down because I couldn't do anything and um, followed his advice and I started painting. Um, I knew I was going to be home for a long period of time, so I really didn't have anything holding me back. Um, so I, I really just, I started creating. And it, it, from the moment I picked up my paintbrush, I really just never put it back down. It was, it was an instant love again. Um, and uh, like I said, I didn't have anything really keeping me from it because there wasn't a whole lot else I could do. So it allowed me the practice to get better. I was really rusty, by the way, when I started back uh, to doing my painting, very rusty those early days. I can't hardly look at those pieces of art now because they, they were pretty rough. But I didn't have anything to lose really at that point. Um, so I started thinking ahead. I didn't have a job to go back to. So I knew I was going to have to do something. And I figured, you know, now it's going to be now or never. The, this was a really awful situation that I was in. But I was determined that I was going to make it into a positive situation. So I decided that I was just going to go for it. And I was going to throw everything that I had. I was going to put all of my savings that I had um, and I was going to I, I was going to do my dream of being a full time artist. I had had that dream since I was in middle school, younger probably, and I knew it was going to be a now or never type of situation. Um, so that's pretty much how I started. I got some artwork together. I 
was already on Facebook. I have a personal page on Facebook and I was sort of relaying my information to my friends and family about what I was considering doing. Everybody was really supportive and I opened up my Facebook art page. I read a lot about Etsy and decided that I was going to open up an Etsy shop. I learned how to take photos of my work. Um, I, I basically just did a lot of research on how to market yourself. Where's the best place to sell online? How do you sell online? Do you have to pay state taxes? How do you do this? How do you do that? It was a lot of information, but I, I really, I had no frame of reference. There weren't a lot of YouTube videos out there at that time that was showing people how to do this. So um, luckily I had a few artist friends online who sort of led me by the hand and gave me bits and pieces of information that they had, um, that they were doing, that they had successfully done that uh, maybe I could apply to my own business. So there was a lot of trial and error. Some of those things worked. Some of them didn't, but uh, overall I was really grateful for the help that I received um, from the friends that I had regarding that. So if you don't have any artist friends, get some online. Artists are awesome people and all of the artists that I've met online have been really helpful and um, they're just the best people. So anyway, um, yeah, so I opened up my Etsy shop. It took me about two weeks probably to get a few things together. I didn't want to just open my shop with one or two items. I wanted to look semi-established because somebody just looking at my shop, I wanted them to know that I was a professional and that I meant business. So I made sure that I had several pieces available to uh, show for sale. I sold several things um, on my just via my personal page just uh, initially from friends and family which was very kind of them they wanted to help me sort of get started and so I I started out um, selling that way and then quickly realized that uh, I was not going to be able to make a full-time living initially selling on Etsy alone um, because it's it's challenging to do that and the market is very oversaturated and you're in competition with a lot of other artists who are wanting to do the exact same thing as you are. So I needed to bring in an income. Now I'm going to stop here and say that I am married. I was married in 2012 to the same person um, and if you have a partner or a spouse who is supportive in that way, that will help you immensely. Um, I was fortunate enough that I was uh, able to rely on the little bit of savings that I had. I Again, I knew I was going to be using all of my savings, which I did. That was extremely scary for me because I had built up my savings account a little bit, I would say to pay maybe six months worth of bills. Um, and I knew that I was gonna be using all of that as I was trying to get established. But had I not had that, I still had sort of my husband as a security blanket. So if you're doing this on your own, you can do it on your own, but make sure that you have some form of savings to fall back on. So, you know, it, it's not something that you can just decide, wake up one day and, and say, well, I don't have any savings in my savings account. Um, I don't know how I'm going to pay next month's bills, but I'm quitting my job and I'm going to be a full-time artist. That, I think, would give me a heart attack if, if I did something like that bold. Not to say that it can't be done, but it's better to plan a little bit. Plan things out. Nothing happens overnight. Great things take time. Everything worth doing takes time to do. So plan a little bit before you uh, make the decision to, to do something like that. Um, and the other thing that I wanted to mention about bringing in income since Etsy was not going to be doing it for me, which was a shock, by the way. I was very ignorant and naive. I thought, oh, I'll just put all this stuff online on Etsy, and then 
People will just gravitate to my shop and see it and buy it and all things will be great with the world. And it just did not work out that way at all. So I knew that I had to diversify. I had to find other ways to support myself, which means I had to keep listing things on Etsy, keep making my listings better, try to um, draw people to my Etsy shop. Um, I had to build up my Facebook page. Um, so I had to constantly reach people, uh, try to find my target market um, on Facebook, people that would, would be interested in the work that I was creating at that time. Um, I went to various shops around my area that sold uh, like local art and ask if I could put a few things in their shops. Um, there we have a, a local um, a local art shop um, that stems off of a, an art museum. And so they were taking local artists work. Um, you know, you have to find your resources. Uh, if you live somewhere that has shops, boutiques that sell local art, you want to get in on those places. You can't rely on one, one specific place to bring in all of your income. Um, that is not a realistic goal. And I, so if you're doing really well on Etsy, you may not do really well on Etsy next month. Even today, there are down times on Etsy. Generally, my worst down time is when school starts because everybody is concentrating on getting their kids back to school and they're spending money on books and, and uniforms and all this stuff and they do not have the time or the money to be looking at artwork. So I generally around that area, it is a really, really slow time. So I kind of know that I'm not going to have, I can't depend on income at some of these places. And when you can't depend on income at one place, then hopefully you have income coming in at other places that will compensate for those slow periods that you're having. So, you know, if you, if you do that enough, at enough different places, then it, you'll supplement your income when one kind of, pulls back, then you'll bring in income from another place. Um, so yeah, I, that's pretty much how I, how I did it. And, um, I just kept my head down. I tried not to get freaked out when money wasn't coming in and I just kept creating more art, create, 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 um, and promote yourself and get out there and have your artwork um, at as many places as you can so that you're getting commissions in. Um, and at that time, I was also, people would ask me if I would consider painting such and such for them and like, you know, whatever it was at the time, if it was like a pet portrait or if it was a landscape or something like that, taking commissions, that's another way to bring in an income. Teaching is another way to bring in an income. Go to your local Michaels or Hobby Lobby or art club and whatever it is that you are a master at, offer to teach that. That will bring in income. So between Etsy and teaching and having your art at boutiques and shops and things like that, you should be able to pull in. Um, all of that together should make a difference. That's not to say that you're not gonna be struggling. I was struggling. I had to make huge sacrifices early on. There were a lot of things that I did not do. There were no vacations. I didn't buy anything extra. All of my money went towards art supplies and towards paying my bills when I did not have that income coming in on a regular basis. So yes, it's scary. It is scary in the beginning, but if you set things into place and you have a plan, you can do it. Um, you really can because um, when I started, I thought things were over for me with no job and a surgery that I didn't know if I was gonna ever fully recover from. 
And so, yeah, it, you know, we all face challenges. It's just what you do with those challenges. You turn those things around and, you know, everything happens for a reason. And if it had not been for me losing my job, if it had not been for that surgery, I would not be where I am today. So that's pretty much it. That's, uh, that's my story. So if, um, if you have any uh, other questions, uh, that I did not answer, um, you can ask me down in the comment section below. And as always, I like to keep the conversation going. So I would love to hear your story about how you made the transition to becoming a full-time artist. Um, or if you haven't done that yet, and if you would like to, what your biggest fear is, what your biggest challenge is. Um, yeah, so maybe we can sort of help each other out in the comment section because you guys are really great when you leave comments. Um, and I think we all benefit from hearing what one another has to say on issues like that. So if you found this video helpful, I, can, I really would greatly appreciate it if you would give me a thumbs up because it helps others find my content and that way we can all help each other out in this great community of ours. And uh, I look forward to seeing you all next time. So I hope you have a great day. Bye, everybody.